Good morning. Welcome to our worship service here at St. Paul's this morning. We would ask that you sign the members, member and guest cards that are in the pews in front of you and leave them in the slots that are on either end of the pew. Today we have a little bit of a different service. It's, I guess I would call it a kind of a song service with readings and a short sermonette, but it all is going to reflect how we watch Jesus coming into Jerusalem. Uh, the theme, rethinking real strength. If Jesus didn't have strength doing what he did this Holy Week, well, we would be lost. And his strength came from trusting his Father in heaven and a willingness to carry out the plan of salvation. We're going to stand in a minute, but I would first have you greet each other before you, we start worshiping. Then I will ask you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, during the weeks of Lent, we have been preparing to commemorate our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection. Today we come together to begin the solemn journey of Holy Week. Christ entered in triumph into his own city to complete his work as our Savior and to gain for us the forgiveness of sins life, and salvation. We follow in faith and praise him with joy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Our gospel reading comes from the 11th chapter of the gospel of Mark. We read verses 1 through 10. This is Mark's account of the triumphal entry. As they approached Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and told them, Go into the village ahead of you. As soon as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and he will send it back here without delay. They left and found a colt in the street, tied at a door, and they untied it. Some who were standing there asked them, What are you doing untying that colt? The disciples answered, answered them just as Jesus had instructed, and the men let, let them go. They brought the colt to Jesus, threw their garments on it, and Jesus sat on it. Many people spread their garments on the road. Others spread branches that they had cut from the fields. Those who went in front and those who followed were crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. God, our Father, we remember how Jesus entered Jerusalem and was welcomed as a king by those who shouted, Hosanna, and spread their clothing and palm branches in his path. Accept our praise and listen to our prayers as we rejoice in our triumphant king, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You may be seated and we'll sing the opening hymn. Thank you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning in our readings, we are doing the passion history, the activities of Holy Week that uh, is recorded in the Gospel of John. We do part one where, or Gospel of Luke, sorry. Uh, part one is Luke chapter 22, verses 1 to 23. The festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and experts in the law were trying to find some way to put Jesus to death because they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and spoke with the chief priests and officers of the temple guard about how he could betray Jesus to them. They were glad and agreed to give him money. He promised to do it and was looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus to them away from the crowd. The day of unleavened bread arrived when it was necessary to sacrifice the Passover lamb. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go, prepare the Passover for us, so that we may eat it. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? He told them, Just as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters. Tell the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large furnished upper room. Make preparations there. They went and found things just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, Jesus reclined at the table with the twelve apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is being poured out for you. But look, the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man is going to go just as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. They began to discuss with one another which of them it was who was going to do this. Here ends the first part of the Passion History. Our service continues with the next hymn, verse 6 of Soul, Adorn Yourself with Gladness.
Part two is found in Luke chapter 22, verses 24 through 46. A dispute arose among the disciples about which of them was considered to be the greatest. But he told them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are called benefactors. But it is not to be that way with you. Instead, let the greatest among you become like the youngest, and the one who leads like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who reclines at the table or one who serves? Isn't it the one who reclines at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have remained with me in my trials. I am going to grant a kingdom to you, just as my Father granted to me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, pay attention. Satan has asked to have you, have you all, so that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. <coughs> and when you are returned to me, strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. But Jesus replied, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you deny me two, three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you out without money bag, traveler's bag, and sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they said. Then he told them, but now let the one who has a money bag take it, and likewise a traveler's bag. And let the one who has <coughs> no sword and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. He was counted with the transgressors. Indeed, what is written about me is going to have its fulfillment. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He said to them, that is enough. Jesus left and went out to the Mount of Olives, as was his custom. His disciples followed him. And when he reached the place, he told them, keep praying that you may not enter into temptation. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. <coughs> An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. As he was in agony, he prayed more fervently. His sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer, he went to the disciples and found them sleeping as a result of sorrow. He said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and keep praying so that you may not enter into temptation. The word of the Lord. We sing the next verse, hymn number 873. Still speaking, a crowd appeared. 
and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He came near to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When those who were around him saw what was about to happen, they said to him, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus replied, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders <coughs> who had come out against him, have you come out as you would against a robber with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour when darkness rules. Then they seized him, led him away, and brought him into the high priest's house. Peter followed at a distance. When they had lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down, Peter sat down among them. A servant girl saw him sitting near the light. She looked closely at him and said, This man was also with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. After a little while, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter answered, Man, I am not. After about one hour had passed, someone else was firmly insisting, Truly this man was with him too, because he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I don't know what you are talking about. At that very moment, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the Lord's word, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. He went outside and wept bitterly. The men who were holding Jesus in custody mocked him while they were beating him. <coughs> they blindfolded him and kept asking, Prophesy, <coughs> who hit you? And they went on saying many other blasphemous things against him. The word of the Lord. <laughs> we sim sing the next hymn verse. Jesus, I will ponder now. recorded in Luke 22, verses 66 to 71, and in chapter 23, verses 1 to 12. As soon as it was day, the council of the elders of the people met together. Both the chief priests and experts in the law, they brought him into their Sanhedrin and said, If you are the Christ, tell us. He said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer me or release me. But from now on, you will see the Son of Man be seated on the right hand of the power of God. They all said, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, I am what you are saying. Then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? 
for we ourselves have heard it from his own mouth. The whole group of them got up and brought him before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation, forbidding the payment of taxes to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? It is as you say, Jesus replied. Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they kept insisting. He stirs up the people, teaching all through Judea, beginning from Galilee all the way here. Then Pilate heard, when Pilate heard this, he asked if he was a Galilean. <coughs> when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem during those days. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad. For a long time he had wanted to see him because he had heard many things about him. He hoped to see some miraculous miracles performed by him. He questioned him with many words, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the experts in the law stood there vehemently accusing him. Herod, along with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and ridiculed him. Dressing him in bright clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends with each other on that day. Before this, they had been enemies of each other. The word of the Lord. <coughs> we sing the next hymn, Lamb of God. Part 5 comes from Luke chapter 23, verses 13 to 32. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me as one who is misleading the people. Look, I have examined him in your presence. I have found in this man no basis for the charge you are bringing against him. Herod did not either, for he sent him back to us. See, he has done nothing worthy of death. So I will have him flogged and release him. Pilate needed to release one prisoner to them at the festival. But they all shouted together with one voice, Take him away, release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown in prison for a rebellion in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them again because he wanted to release Jesus. But they kept shouting, Crucify, crucify. He said to them, 
the third time. Why? What evil has he done? I have found no grounds for, for sentencing him to death. So I will whip him and release him. But they said that they kept pressuring him with voices, demanding that he be crucified. <coughs> their, voice, <coughs> their voices were overwhelming. So Pilate decided that what they demanded would be done. He released the one they had asked for, who had been thrown in prison for rebellion and murder, but he handed Jesus over to their will. As they led him away, they seized Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. They placed the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people was following him, including women who were mourning and wailing for him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, stop weeping for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Be sure of this, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never gave birth, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things to the green wood, what will happen to the dry? Two other men who were criminals were led away with Jesus to be, cru to be executed. The word of the Lord. <coughs> and we sing the next hymn verse. is recorded in verses 33 to 56 of Luke 23. When they play, came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They cast lots to divide his garments among them. The people stood watching, the rulers were ridiculing him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if this is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also made fun of him. Coming up to him, they offered him sour wine, saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There, were also an, there was also an inscription written above him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there was blaspheming him, saying, Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God since you are under the same condemnation? We are punished justly for we are receiving what we deserve for what we have done. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Amen, I tell you, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun was darkened. Then the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had happened, he began to glorify God, saying, This man really was righteous. When all the groups of people who had gathered to see this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home, beating their chests. 
All those who knew Jesus and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea who was a member of the council, a good and righteous man. He had not agreed to their plan He had not agreed to their plan. And actually, he was looking forward to the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate, asked for Jesus' body. He took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb that was cut out of rock, where no one yet had been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed after Joseph, and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid there. Then they returned and prepared spices and perfumes. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. The word of the Lord. We sing the next hymn, Rest, O Christ, from all your labor. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation this morning is found in the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9, foretelling Jesus coming into Jerusalem and and telling them uh, to rejoice over the fact that he's coming. It says, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. He is humble and is riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, our hero of salvation, Dear dear friends, a lot of people love heroes. Movies are about heroes. And sometimes there is a military parade through cities where the soldiers have come home and have won a great victory. People cheer, people praise, people say thanks, trumpets, drums, all hailing the heroes. Well, here we see Jesus, the hero, before he goes to war. The people saying, Hosanna, which means Jesus saves or God saves. Hosanna to the son of David. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. These words indicated Jesus was the Messiah that was to come, especially the term son of David, which was used frequently since the days of, of David, where he was promised that he would be the forefather of the Savior of the world. He's the reason that the daughter of Zion was to greatly rejoice. But a question is this, who is the daughter of Zion? Well, keep in mind that Zion itself was the mountain on which Jerusalem was built and where the temple was. It represented the presence of God. This is where God had told the people to come on a regular basis where they, in effect, would meet God. It's used a lot in the Old Testament, this term, daughters of Zion. What it refers to is the inhabitants of Jerusalem, for one thing, can refer to gen generally God's people. It refers to citizenship in God's kingdom. Sometimes the Bible refers to God's people as the bride of Christ, and it makes sense, doesn't it? If it's the daughter of Zion, that would be the bride of Christ. However, sometimes it's used positively, but sometimes it's used negatively when the people stopped obeying God, when they started to turn against him. And in some of the Old Testament passages, they're called adulteresses, the people of Jerusalem, that is, because they would go and worship false gods. Here, it specifically is talking about the people who were actually looking forward to the coming Messiah. And to tell you the truth, I think you can say that it's actually talking about you and me as well, as God's people looking for the coming of the Messiah. Not the first time, but certainly the second time. And it's these people, the daughters of Zion, who are supposed to rejoice, shout, look, why? Well, shout, because the king is coming. He's coming like no other conquering hero or worldly king. He comes humble, gentle, riding on a donkey. No white stallion, no troops, no swords and spears, not demanding servitude of those he conquered and were then his subjects, but rather serving them. But the reality is he was a king coming to do some conquering, coming to conquer Satan, coming to uh, face death head on. And he would gain the victory. Yes, he would be the conquering hero, only totally different from what the people expected. Then we're told to shout. Why? Well, because he's the righteous one and he brings salvation. Jesus had to be righteous in order to carry out his mission. We say in the creed, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he was special from the very beginning. He became fully human so that he could take our place. As he went to the cross, he was taking our place, paying the penalty of sins. As he was buried and then rose again, we are connected with him that way too, as in baptism. He was coming to carry out his mission. And to do that, he would have to face God's wrath over sin. He would have to bear the sins of the whole world. He would suffer and die. But in the process, Satan's power would be taken away. Satan could no longer charge us with sins because Jesus had covered them. And he didn't come into the city and with what happened later in the week, 
It wasn't as if he was some sort of a victim, a poor victim of circumstance. No, all of this was from the plan way back at the Garden of Eden. And the passage says, look. Look. Don't look someplace else. The king is coming to conquer our enemy. And this is something that none of us can ignore. We have to look, take note. He came to be king in our hearts. He proved that he was the righteous one. He proved that he had salvation. His resurrection proved that he had conquered. And as he comes into our hearts, we see him as the hero that brings us salvation. We need him desperately. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to people by which we must be saved. Look. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout it to the world that the king has conquered. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please stand for the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Under Pontius Pilate, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. And there he will come to conquer the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Church, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Today we have multiple prayers. We pray for the family of Al Treeter, whose sister passed away recently. We have health issues for uh, Phil Fallock, Mary Wood, Renate Gerstenkorn, Larry Cramp, and Missy Jacobs. Phil continues to recover with health issues. Mary will begin chemotherapy this week. Renate soon will be called home to glory. Larry was hospitalized last week, and Missy was diagnosed with cancer. We also pray for the Totsky family. Their four children are going to be baptized after the second service this morning. Then we also have prayers for uh, Brineling relatives, uh, Mary Jane Radloff, who was Michelle Breinling's mother, uh, celebrated or is celebrating her 74th birthday today. And they would like to say a prayer of thanks that she actually made it because last summer she was diagnosed with cancer and they didn't think that she was going to make it even to the end of the year. And then we also say a prayer for the birthday of Mackenzie Breinling. Her birthday is... This coming Tuesday, she'll be 14. We'll also say a prayer in connection with uh, Mr. Booth's call. We pray. Lord, we pray that you comfort the family of Al Treater as they mourn the loss of his sister. Lead them to find strength and hope in you and the proclamation of the life-giving gospel. As Mr. Buch 
thinks about his call, we ask that you would give him wisdom and understanding. Let him recognize that this call is also from you so that he can consider both situations where he has been called to serve you. Bless his deliberations and be with him so that when he makes a decision, he will be certain that that's your decision for him. Lord, continue to be with Phil Fallock and Mary Wood through their health difficulties. Bolster them with your strength and lead them to focus on Christ crucified and risen from the dead as that which sustains them. Also sustain them physically and heal them as they deal with their struggles as you will. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and needing your strength. We continue prayers for them, Renate, Mary, Phil, Larry, and Missy in their difficulties. We thank you for healing, for the healing you have already granted and pray that you grant more to them all. Bolster them with your strength and lead them to focus on Christ crucified and risen from the dead as that who sustains them in life and in death. Sustain them physically and heal them as you see fit. We also thank you for the sacrament of holy baptism, whereby you place your forgiveness on sinners as well as create and strengthen faith. Be with the Totsky family as Gavin, Bella, Alice, and August are baptized today. Give their whole family a desire to learn more and more of your word and lead them to grow in faith all the days of their lives. Heavenly Father, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on Mackenzie and also on Mary Jane as they celebrate birthdays today and, and this week. Be with them. Grant them that grant that they may have that they may continue in growing in wisdom, grace, and strength to trust all of your goodness all the days of their lives. We thank you also that you have kept Mary Jane alive uh, despite what the doctors said, and we thank you for that blessing as well. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. At this time, we'll have the offering. Please stand. How can I thank you, Father, for allowing me to worship in your house today? I have heard the promises of your love in the gospel. I have praised you, confessed you, and prayed for your blessings. I have been strengthened by the witness and worship of others. Keep my faith strong as I live out the tasks of my life. Take away my doubts and fears and give me courage to share the good news of your Son wherever I go and however I can. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn. Good morning once again. There are a lot of announcements, like there were a lot of prayers. Uh, ML has given our kids a chance for a fundraiser that has to do with plants. Um, they're going to be in the school by the principal's office this morning, if you're interested in uh, looking at what they have there, the, the money that's made from that is going to the gymnasium fund. Uh, on the back of your bulletin are the Holy Week church services. Keep in mind, Thursday with communion, 4.30 and 6.30. The Good Friday service is at 12 noon, and 6.30 p.m. And then Easter worship is at 8 and 10.30, the normal Sunday morning times, with a breakfast in between those services. I guess if you want to, you can still sign up for the Easter breakfast and to bring something on the round table in the narthex. Trying to make sure I catch everything. Okay, Pastor Knox can straighten me out later if I'm wrong.
we have several letters. Uh, the first one is from Mr. Buch. Some of you know this already. Dear members of St. Paul's, I have received a divine call to serve at St. John's in Westland, Michigan. The call is to serve as principal of grades pre-K to five and teacher. God has blessed our Wells Church body with a wonderful network of churches and schools throughout our country. St. Paul's ministry, ministry field is an exciting one, just as the ministry in Westland. Please pray for my wife and I as we deliberate where best to serve God's people. If you would like to talk to me about the call to Westland or my current call to St. Paul's in Stevensville, please reach out to, to me. It helps immensely to have discussions with people at both congregations to help find and clarify and reach a final decision. In Christ, Garrett Buch. Then we have a letter from Pastor Brian Krieger, who had the call here. Dear family of God, and especially the saints at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Stevensville, over these past weeks, the Lord has once again humbled me by placing an additional calling before me to serve as pastor at St. Paul's. Through prayer and discussion, the Holy Spirit has led me to return the call to Stevensville. I'm richly blessed at Bloomington Living Hope and feel that this is the best place for me and my family to continue to serve God's people. The teachers, staff, and leaders at St. Paul's were especially helpful and gracious as I was deliberating this call. It is clear how much the members love their church and school. It is also abundantly clear that God's goodness and favor rests upon the church and school ministry of St. Paul's, and I am confident that God will provide the right workers at the right time. May God's love and grace continue to guide and uplift you all, and may the power of the risen Christ bring you new life and unity as we go forth with love of Jesus. Pastor Brian Krieger, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Grace and peace to all of you in Christ Jesus. And a third letter from Mr. Mark Renner. Dear members of St. Paul's, this letter is to inform you of my decision regarding the call the Holy Spirit led you to extend to me on February 26th. Through my discussions with your leaders, I have been led to see the needs of your church and school and your efforts to share the gospel. I am thankful for your prayers and for the input I received from so many people as I deliberated this call. As I have wrestled in prayer about your ministry and the ministry at Resurrection and Life, where I now serve, the Lord has led me to return the call that you extended to me. I will continue to keep your ministry in my prayers as you wait for the leader the Lord will provide for your school. In Christ's service, Mark Renner. Pastor Knox is going to speak to you for a minute. I, before that, I just wanted to remind you that Bible class is going to be held here inside the church, and I think I'll stay away from all of you and just greet you from here and say good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, just wanted to, to give everyone a little bit of encouragement um, as uh, both principal and pastor calls were returned, and, uh, you know, we've been calling for, for a while, and it can be disheartening, perhaps, and discouraging as uh, we keep, keep getting those returns. Uh, just a, a word of encouragement from the Book of Lamentations um, as Jeremiah, uh, likely Lamentations, written by Jeremiah, uh, saw a lot of, of destruction and devastation as the city of Jerusalem was destroyed, God's temple was leveled. Um, Lamentations has this, this beautiful chapter, chapter 3, um, this gold nugget. Um, and there's a part in here that um, I was thinking about this morning. And this is what Jeremiah writes. He says, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. 
The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Waiting is hard. It's difficult, isn't it? Especially uh, as we've been calling and calling and calling, um, and we haven't had anyone to accept uh, those calls yet. But uh, our salvation is in the Lord. Uh, Therefore, we wait for him. Uh, And Jeremiah says, it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Um, And so as we continue to call for pastor and principal, we wait patiently. Uh, It is not easy, but the Lord will give us that strength to continue waiting, uh, and the Lord will provide uh, his workers as he sees fit uh, for St. Paul's. Um, So we we continue to carry out ministry, right? Ministry has not ceased at St. Paul's. We will continue to to carry out God's work here uh, as a body of believers. Um, So just that encouragement um, that the the Lord is still guiding St. Paul's, uh, even if we maybe get discouraged at times. Um, So just that encouragement. And to keep uh, that in your prayers, the call process, uh, and that the Lord would raise up more people for his harvest field. Um, Just that encouragement for you all that the Lord... Uh, continues to be with us, uh, and continues to guide St. Paul's. That's all I have, just an encouragement for you this morning. God's blessings on your day and the rest of your week.